Welcome, welcome back for those which had joined before uh, one hour ago. Here we are in the most glorious sunny Zurich, the most beautiful afternoon. And when the afternoon outside, it's this sunny and glorious. What am I doing with my life? I'm indoors talking about skincare, but this for sure with a reason. And this is just a pleasure. There is nothing I would rather do than being here talking about skincare today, as we've been doing all the last uh, recent lives, talking skincare, which is not only what's inside the pot, but skincare, which is best lifestyle options about sleeping, about nutrition today, and everything which can educate us to take better profit from great skincare. So for everybody which is joining, uh, from the US, uh, from the following of our Dr. Powell, which I will invite very soon to join. Um, we are a Swiss skincare brand called Swiss Line, and we believe a lot in skin biology. We believe in uh, anti-inflammatory. We believe a lot that skin, it's meant to be treated as an organ, an intelligent organ. So skincare is not just about marketing ingredients, but it's very much about making healthy options. Not only the ingredients can be healthier, but many options in our life. And that's what we're gonna be talking today. Um, two weeks ago, we were talking about sleep. We have our Dr. Bruce, Dr. Sleep. So you can find then in the recorded version, you will find information about those links. We have added to our official Swiss Line website a lot of information about uh, better sleep for better skin care. And today the topic is uh, healthy food for healthy skin, a bit of healthy hair, even though of course our speciality is skin care. So I've seen already Dr. Powell somewhere there. There she is. And everything will be more interesting from that moment on. There you Hi. are. Hi, Ro. How are you? Good. How are you? We're doing well. I think we have more sun in Switzerland than you have. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, you know, in a doctor's office, so oh. there's no windows. So, but it is sunny and it's beautiful here. It's in the 70s. So I'll take Come it. On. Someone has to work hard, right? Not all the skincare people, which is just talk, 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 right? We have a busy life. Dr. Paul, so I just think before you introduce yourself, just to give some context to your audience in terms of uh, Swiss Line, why we are here, we were asking you to help us to understand. So what better options in terms of food, exceptionally uh, with the idea of anti-inflammatory, uh, healthy options because we are very keen. We have this line called Age Intelligence. Maybe in mm. the end, I think you have some surprises for your followers, right? Yes. So tell us, to us and to your followers as well, how did you become culinary doctor? <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad that you know you wanted to have this conversation and to really go deep because I think there's a lot of conversations happening about skincare, but to really like go deep into like how do we prove, improve our skin from the inside out? I just think it's wonderful. So I'm thankful for that. But my name is Dr. Lauren. I'm a board certified family medicine physician. I'm known as a culinary doctor. And that's because I like to teach about food. I believe that food is one of the most powerful drugs that we have. And so we cannot talk about really any health condition without talking about what we're actually putting in our bodies. So today I'm excited because we're going to actually talk about um, that with respect to our skin, one of our largest organs. That's great. I mean, we are firm believers and uh, I don't think we hear often skincare brands saying that skincare alone can only do as much, right? I think most- Right, you were the first one I heard say that and I was- You see? <laughs> I was thankful to hear it, you know? No, but for us, it, it resonates a lot. I think for Swiss um, mindset when it comes mm -hmm. to skincare, because maybe the heritage of Swiss skincare, it's closer to pharmaceutical industry, has always been very close to medical clinics, these um, regeneration type of medicine. Uh, so thinking uh, anti-aging, not like specifically anti-wrinkle, but global mm -hmm. wellness. So now that we know a bit more about you, by the way, someone was saying, I love Dr. Powell's hair. <laughs> Thank you. Nobody comments on my poor thin hair. It's my nice. It's old nice. Man, old man hair. 
So tell us um, from your perspective, just that we get this anti-inflammatory topic out of the way, uh, what would you say are the main bad guys, the good guys to tackle this inflammation topic? So um, I think we should talk about the bad guys first. Okay. And um, I want to preface it by saying, I'm not saying you should never, ever, ever, ever eat these things. I, I'm not yeah. that, that person. And, you know, when you tell someone what they can't have, they always want it more. So okay. I'm always careful with that. But I'm saying these are the things that we really need to be mindful of when it comes to our skin um, yeah. and specifically inflammation. And I think the biggest thing is the sugary processed stuff. Okay. Um, there's just a lot of artificial things. And it's super, super processed. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in reading ingredients. And so if you um, read the ingredients and you don't know what it is that's in there, or if they have 37 ingredients, it's probably not something you should be putting in your body. But I want you to just be mindful of the super, super processed sweets and treats that we all um, enjoy. Yeah. So the donuts and the chips and the things that really have no nutritional value yeah. They're just super highly processed and are super inflammatory. And that's for skin. That's for all things. Um, we just really want to watch that stuff. And sometimes it's obvious, right? Like, like the donuts, right? We, we know that that's like a super processed thing. But I think we have to be careful about some of the hidden stuff, like some of the yeah. cereals, some of the, the juices, the healthy juices in the soda or the pop. Um, we have to kind of watch out for those things as well. I think it's great what you say also uh, about reading the ingredients. You know, it's something that in our skincare community, uh, and that's a topic for another discussion, but a lot of us, uh, most people become highly concerned about mm -hmm. specific ingredients. So when it comes to food, very often you disregard the whole yeah. thing. And when we think processed sugars, most times they don't are, they are not even called sugar, correct? Yeah. Yeah, you have they're them. called other things. That's why you have to be careful because on the front, right, it'll say, you know, zero sugar or no added sugar. And so then you just call it a day. But that's why yeah. you have to really read the ingredients because sugar can come in all different forms. And a lot of times they're in those strange words that we don't even recognize. And so we, we think there's no, there's no sugar in this. But that's yeah. why I really want people to be mindful of ingredients. Like if you don't recognize the word, you, you don't want to put it in your body, right? But yeah. if you can look at something and you're like, oh, broccoli, what's the ingredients of broccoli? It's broccoli, right? Broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> well, like if you look at the ingredients of a Twinkie, I think there's over 17 ingredients yeah. and that's a lot that's of stuff. And, you know, I'm a chemistry major and I don't even know what some of those things, those yeah. things are. I think examples could be that we are also creating a little bit of a blacklist. I think a lot of like the fructose, corn syrup, yeah. right? Uh, maltodextrin, maltodextrose, yeah. right? So those are bad guys. Uh, anything corn normally in those many, many, many ingredients means sugar by different yes. words, right? Yes. Uh, I think it's very interesting what you say. Like I always think about bread because bread is such an mm -hmm. iconic. I don't eat bread actually. I don't eat uh, a lot of carbs and sure, no processed carbs. But bread being kind of an iconic food, bread is three ingredients, four ingredients. Yeah. And I'm sure most of you, if you check the bread you buy in supermarkets, sometimes you have 20 yeah. ingredients for bread. So that's cake. That's not bread. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's so that's true. It. It's so yes. true. Like, why is there so much stuff in something that you know is so simple to make? I remember when I was always trying to pick um, marinara sauce, like to make spaghetti. And yeah. I was like, why does this have so much stuff in it? Like, Marinara sauce is pretty simple, right? It's like tomatoes, some spices, some herbs, some garlic. And that's when I started making my own stuff because I was going to the store looking for a sauce that didn't have a ton of ingredients. Um, then I was like, I'll just make my own because it's just too much. Like, I don't even know all the stuff that they're putting in these, in these processed or pre-made things. Okay, so we put sugar under the magnifying lamp. As you say, it's not to demonize and to say that you have to go through life without sugar, but to be mindful, correct? Right. Um, another thing that we also, when we spoke last time, that I was also sharing with you is that a bit my personal journey going from vegetarian for decades. I tried vegan for just a couple of years, strict vegan. Then I went back to eggs over mm. vegan. Uh, <laughs> now I'm much more omnivore because I'm more on a ketogenic fasting and this is what really works uh, for me. But there's always this element of the meat. Where do we place yeah. meat? Uh, is there a difference between meat of a good quality and processed meat? Right. So definitely not all meat is created equal. 
And so um, that's why I said processed, you know, all processed stuff. And that includes the processed meat. And so I'm someone that I don't necessarily advocate for a specific diet, but I say what you put in your body should be very high quality. So if you're going to eat a burger, let that be a high quality, organic, grass fed, high quality meat. You don't want to get your meat which is really the most expensive thing that you eat, right? Like beans and, and, and legumes and vegetables are inexpensive generally. The meat is the most expensive thing. So you don't want to, you know, and sometimes it's hard if we're on a budget, but you, you don't want to go get a burger for $2. You know, how, how quality is that? Like, you, you know, it's not going to be exactly. the highest quality. Yeah. And when we're talking about inflammation, I see a couple of people put comments about gluten and dairy. Those can also be inflammatory. Those tend to be person dependent. So I don't want to make like a blanket statement that right. no one can have dairy or no one that can have gluten. But for some people, dairy can be inflammatory. For some people, gluten can be inflammatory. And so I think we definitely have to listen to our bodies. Um, and that means not just how, do, how is my skin reacting to what I'm eating, but how do I feel on the inside? How yeah. is my mental state? How is my mood? Do I feel bloated? Do I feel energy? Like we have to kind of listen to our body when it comes to all those things, yeah. including the meat. I think it's, it's very interesting you say that you are not advocating because I think that's one of the problems probably we have in education yeah. and in our reality is that we are constantly sold these ideas of ideal solutions, one fits all. Uh, so the idea that vegan is healthy, we can imagine probably ways of vegan which are totally unhealthy. Yes, right? Because like hot Cheetos are vegan and <laughs> Skittles are vegan. So And Coca-Cola. Um, and Coca-Cola, right? And I think it even I think it even says gluten free on the um front of the on the label. But we have to and you know, when we were talking last time, I thought about it when we got off the phone. I've kind of had like a little journey too. I was um keto for a while when I was in the end of med school and I was kind of getting ready and wanted to lose weight for my wedding. And then for a while I was vegetarian for like a good stint of time. Um, and I just feel, I don't advocate again for one specific diet. I think that we should do things that we can maintain. Yes. And I think sometimes when we're super restrictive, it's hard to maintain those things. And so I think I, you know, when people say, well, what are you and what do you eat? Cause I think everybody around me is like, what are you like? Do you eat? And I like to say I'm very plant forward. So I like to lead with plants. My plate is okay. always going to be at least 50%. My plate will always be at least 50% plants. I eat at least one raw meal a day. And that's something that's sustainable to me. But I will also eat um, a piece of chicken every once in a while if that's what I want. I love yeah. high quality yeah. seafood because I know we're going to also talk about some of the foods that are great for our skin and for anti-inflammatory. Yeah. And that's eating the right. rainbow. And the way to do that is you have to have multiple colors. You know, so yeah. vitamin A and our vitamin C are amazing for our skin. Um, and so you see that a lot of times in vegetables, right? Vitamin A, the precursor is beta carotene. That's the orange stuff. So that's going to be your yeah. carrots and your sweet potatoes, which are going to be really, really good for our skin. The healthy fats are going to be really, really great for our skin. So you get that in some of the salmons and, and the fatty one fish. Of the weights, one, of, one of the codes then, that idea of the rainbow, I love that idea of the rainbow. So one of the codes to make sure the plant-based food you have on the plate to have those yeah. differentiated colors. Yes, that, I think that's just a, a way to keep it easy because I don't want it to be too confusing, too many yeah. rules and people are like, did I do it right? Did I not do it right? Did I not eat enough? Like eat the rainbow, try to make sure there's at least three different colors on your plate, switch yeah. things up. Like if you're, if, you, if you're green as spinach, don't have you know, the only green thing you eat be spinach, but switch it up, try different greens, try some Swiss yeah. chard, try some kale, like switch it up. Exactly, that's, that's so refreshing, like this idea of a, a green juice that you hate in the end, and that's the only thing you are taking because you think that's the only thing which is healthy, instead of, because I, I keep on seeing people commenting, like, but sugar is so nice. You know, I, I also have to exchange with your eat the rainbow. Very often I say, Pick your poison, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. there is one thing you really love. Be chocolate. Uh, yeah. Actually, you can educate your taste buds to take 100% uh, cocoa chocolate, yeah. which then becomes an antioxidant bomb. Yes. Uh, you see, so guys, already this idea of demonizing chocolate, if you have <laughs> acne, often is the dairy in the chocolate, the mm -hmm. amount of sugar in the chocolate. So you can pick your poison. There is something you really love. Have that one thing. Yeah, but don't yeah. have pudding, toffee, <laughs> uh, breakfast cereals, right? As you were saying. 
Yeah, that's true. It's all about balance. And again, if you're super restrictive, that's going to be hard for you to maintain. And then you're going to go to the extreme of the other things. So like today, I really wanted some churros. And uh, the place across from us just like um, got these new bite sized churros and we dipped them in Nutella. I haven't had that in like forever, but I was just wanting it so bad. And so I talked to some of my colleagues and I'm like, do you guys want some? Like, maybe we could all share one order, you know? And so yeah. that's okay. Now I feel like I've satisfied that urge. I'll probably won't eat another churro for like two years. And um, I feel fine about it. I don't feel bad. My body's okay. Absolutely. And I, I don't feel guilty. Yeah. Um, I, I eat a lot, you know what? As I'm not Swiss, I'm just working in Switzerland. I'm going to share with all of you guys, those of you which still think, because there is this idea that Swiss invented chocolate. Swiss invented milk chocolate. So mm. actually, chocolate should mean the old Inca South American chocolate, which doesn't contain any sugar, and mm -hmm, milk. Mm -hmm. that, that's chocolate. So guys, there is a lot of pleasure ahead in terms of <laughs> I strongly believe if we connect our brains with our taste buds, it's not about restriction. It's about self-discovery. Yeah. When we spoke last time, you were telling that you also firm believe a bit of the spiritual experience of food, like more local, more seasonal. Maybe some thoughts about that, the importance of seasonal. Yeah, I firmly believe in eating seasonally. So we should be eating what's growing in season because it's more likely to be local, right? Exactly. So there's a reason why we shouldn't be eating mango all year round because um, yeah. it's probably not coming local. So, and also I always use, I always use that as a way to kind of eat on budget too. Because oftentimes when you're getting things out of season, they're going to be more expensive because you're having to get them from other places. So mm -hmm. I really do try to eat locally. I try to eat seasonally with my vegetables and my fruit. Um, and then I really have an appreciation for like the food that I'm consuming, whether it's, you know, fruit and vegetables, whether it's a piece of fish, like I'm so thankful to be able to like have food, to have quality food, and um, I want to eat responsibly. So I'm going to pay more money for eggs that are, you know, from a local farm that were um, pasture raised. And, and I know that, you know, the animals that are supplying me with food were at least allowed to kind of live in a way that was respectful. And so I, yeah. I feel that way. And people make fun of me because they'll say, how much did you spend on that butter? And I say, but they treat the cows very nicely there. And so it <laughs> matters to me. And that really matters to me. It's important to me. And yeah. I feel like um, this food is fueling me. And so I'm going to spend more money on it. Because at the end of the day, you can always like make more money. But if you don't feel good, yeah. you don't feel yeah. well, if you don't like the way that you, you look, if you, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to do that. I think it's a, it, it sounds very provocative. But that idea that also to be on top of your budget. So whatever your budget possibilities are, that element that sometimes if you always buy the cheapest option, you end up not appreciating that food. You consume more because you yeah. can actually add more volume. But speaking of volume, we all think that we gain volume, right? That we become fatter if we eat fat. I think we hinge on that. So what are the fats which are our friends? Are there any fats which can be yes. friends? So there's definitely fats that are good for you. I mean, fat, like the healthy fats, like omega-3 fatty acids um, are really good with um, supplying and supporting the collagen, which is going to make your skin kind of nice and that pump and fullness that, that we all, okay. you know, want to yeah, have. Collagen is important. Yeah. <laughs> ever and ever. Um, and so we get that from our healthy fats, so the omega-3 fatty acids. So you're going to see that in salmon, which is a nice quality fish, um, tuna, sardines, mackerel. Those are all great high quality fats. Um, you know, our nuts have lots of fats in them, but those are healthy, healthy fats as well. Yeah. yeah. I think even though these are healthy foods, I know you and I talked about this before, we still have to be mindful of portions. Um, yeah. So like walnuts and sunflower seeds, these are all great and full of healthy fats and anti-inflammatory, but they still have calories. So we do still have to kind of watch and make sure we're not super overindulging um, because we want to make sure that the benefit outweighs the negative of, of the calorie. Yeah, yeah. But that idea of, of the foods, because I mean, exactly as I say, coming from the ketogenic uh, fasting side, of course, we are very friends uh, with foods. I mean, uh, avocado being one which is less obvious as a fat source, right? I basically nowadays, so I try to cook with coconut oil. Um, it adds too much of the coconut flavor sometimes, the avocado yeah. oil, or even the ghee, if you eat animal mm -hmm. ghee and butter. Uh, as you mentioned, which is very interesting, grass-fed, guys, 
where do you hear grass-fed ever talking about cows? I mean, that, that's a word to research and, and, and to think about. So fish, as you said, uh, salmon, tuna, sometimes there is the risk, uh, the quality of the fish yeah. we can access. Me being Portuguese, we know we come from the Atlantic sardines. Mm. Sometimes those small fat fish are safer because mm. they are never farmed, mm. right? They are not farm sardines. So it, that's a personal choice. I favor when possible those smaller fish, which also from heavy metals, unless you have a very mm -hmm. good quality salmon. Yeah. So this is not to depress anybody. It's just to wake up that capacity that we can make choices for ourselves, right? And, and, yeah. and believe what we are doing. Yes. This is food as medicine, right? I mean, um, it's That's, just being mindful about the things that we're putting in our body, what's serving us and what is not serving us. And sometimes you just don't even realize about the options that you have with your food. Like, I didn't, you know, you may not know that this fish, I didn't know that sardines can't be far, um, farm raised, but that makes sense because they are such a small fish. No, um, they cannot. Yeah. yeah they need so, to constantly move. They have a different biological demand. So you cannot contain them. They mm. have a short life cycle. So you are sure when you eat a sardine, it's not a fish which can have absorbed mm. heavy metals, regardless of the quality of the water. I just see again and again, I think it's again the compliment to your hair. So any secret, <laughs> <laughs> any secret food for stronger hair? Um, well, just so you guys know, like, you know, hair is made from the same cells that make our skin. And yeah. so the same stuff that's going to be good for your skin is going to be good for your hair. I think no, everybody's hair is different. So knowing kind of what works for you. I think one thing we didn't touch on, which is important for both skin and hair is hydration status. So yeah. making sure you're drinking your water and okay. staying super, super hydrated is important. Um, you have to have a healthy scalp to have healthy hair, right? Because your, your hair grows from your scalp and your scalp is your skin. And so, Very much so, um, yeah. Just making sure, but all that stuff, all that stuff matters. All this, the same stuff for skin is the same stuff for hair. I'm loving, I'm loving that, Dr. Paula. But just as also speaking to your audience, you know, I have a still very small YouTube channel called H Traveler. You'll find the link yes, below yeah, I remember, I've in seen the it. recording. It's good. And I love what you just say, because when you say that uh, health uh, for hair is scalp, I mean, I just did a video recently exactly about that, because I always hear people talking about hair, thinking the length of the hair. Yeah. And that's hair makeup. You can make it look beautiful, but it doesn't change the life of hair, right? So it needs to be the roots, the good keratin, the good hydration, as you say, the good pH. So also the inflammation yeah. comes in the, in, in the whole equation. So let's talk a bit about skincare. Can I challenge you? What is your, not brands, we don't need to talk about brands. <laughs> so what are your skincare must-haves? Um, so a gentle face wash, I think is super important. And, um, you know, I have on a little bit of like eye concealer and eyeliner, under eye concealer. Okay. But generally, I'm doing less and less makeup these days because um, I just really want to protect my skin. And I want to make sure that um, the mask, because I'm in a mask all day, and so, you know, you've got this thing on oh, your yeah, face and it's so. kind of like moving. And then um, we have to kind of sometimes reuse our mask. And so then I'm putting that same. So I basically don't wear makeup anymore. So I like, and I say that to say, I've just invested a lot more in actually taking care of my skin because I'm not really wearing makeup. And so okay. a good facial wash is super important for me. Um, I've really gotten into serums the last, over the pandemic, because I just had no idea how much they have upgraded my skincare game so like a vitamin c serum i cannot live without no you're right it's 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 super nice brightener energizer mm -hmm. antioxidant yeah. when i started using a and i'm like being completely honest y'all when i started using a vitamin c serum maybe like after two weeks people started asking me if i was getting botox because they're like your skin just so <laughs> so tight and so bright and i was like it's mm -hmm. literally the serum so Definitely, I use that, you know, every single day in the mornings. And then um, another thing that has become so important to me is my um, moisturizer with a sunscreen. I prefer okay, if my perfect. moisturizer can already have the sunscreen so I don't have to remember. Yeah. And I just feel like um, because I have pigmented skin, it kind of just tends to blend better versus if I have yeah. to put on moisturizer and then put on like that thick white kind of, yeah. um, it just, it, I always feel like it doesn't. Yeah, the white so cast, I, it just means that you need to wear enough of it to reach that uh, SPF. I don't know. Have you seen the Gwyneth Paltrow 
Yeah. Little video from Vogue, which everybody's talking about. Yes. I mean, the highlighter application. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not, not doing that. You're not no, doing that. no. I'm putting it all over. I'm putting it on my neck. And so I honestly, genuinely, I really like your um, moisturizer with sunscreen. It has like SPF 50. And I was so surprised, like on my skin, my melanated skin, how there's, it made it shiny. Like there was no white. We, it was literally, it made my skin shiny. So I, I really like yeah. that. Yeah, it's like, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we went about, we have three SPF uh, type of moisturizers. And the idea, since you mentioned it, is, is to do them like veils. So they actually come uh, with a more, almost like a makeup primer type of mm. texture. So if you have not such a dry skin, you use a, a, a serum before, very much you can get away with it alone. If you have a drier skin, you can apply it after your moisturizer and still have that no white cast type of uh, type of effect okay so you are vitamin c sun protection that's your uh, yeah those are my core. biggest thing and like my dermatologist friends whenever i'm like girl what can i do to like look like a teenager my whole life i have just become and they're like sunscreen lauren wear your sunscreen and they're like make sure you because i like to go for a midday walk while i'm at work and so they're like you need to be reapplying because you're probably sweating a lot of it off when you're when you're walking and so i was like oh i didn't even think about that so the sunscreen has been like a huge one for me. I've used um, topical retinoids from time to time, but I haven't used one in probably like, um, I don't know, maybe I six do, to I eight do. months. A, but they're I'm great too. I'm a retinol too. addicted. I do retinol. <laughs> There's one ingredient I never, with my 50 years old, it's retinol. I can change the, the, the source of retinol, but I've never done a prescription. So I, I do believe with the cosmetic level, maximum 1% it's possible to have a proper anti-aging Oh yeah, I've, all the retinols I've used have never been prescription strength. Even like, yeah. I mean, I could yeah. write the prescription, but they're so like good quality ones that you, I mean, yeah. you can get away with not, you know, using a okay. prescription strength one. So before maybe we try to answer one or two questions, do you want to give good news to your uh, oh, audience, yes. to your followers? Yo, listen. You're becoming generous, right? So you have three <laughs> products for them? Three products. Now, I don't know the middle one. I don't have that one. I have I have the so, sunscreen, I have, yeah, yeah. I have that So that's one. The, the sunscreen we're talking about. That's the vitamin C, as you were saying that you, so oh, that's 10%, yes. 10 that very stable form of vitamin C, which is like a sodium ascorbyl phosphate. So it's the sodium, so that the, the water contact doesn't oxidize so fast. And this is maybe one of our star products, which is Age Intelligence Essential Serum. So it's a mix of uh, anti-inflammatory, Madagascar yeah probiotics uh, from marine biology, ectoine, which is a pharmaceutical yes. anti-pollution type of ingredient, ATP. So you just mix these three guys yeah. every morning. So how are you going to share I actually share them use your... that serum um, at nighttime too. Ah, yes, yes. It's 24 hours. Yes. I'm I love aligning that. it. Of course, if you want to take the good advice of Dr. Paul, of course, I will try to sell you another one for the night. But of course, <laughs> this is... 24 hours. You can it's use perfect. it both. It's so good. Okay, so listen, okay. you guys, I'm going to give away. Um, they told me yesterday, make sure it's okay. Monica told me I can give away two sets. Yes, 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 yes. We are, okay. we are good. We are good people. Listen, and remind me, this stuff is really high quality stuff. What's the value? What's the cost value of these three products? I mean, roughly, like, let's say roughly 280, 300 US dollars. Yeah, so combined. very yeah. nice stuff. So I've been seeing people going crazy in the comments. So someone I saw on here that has been commenting like crazy is um, Ashley. Ashley. So are we you have still a winner. Here? One go. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. I'm going through the comments and I'm just very like using my memory to make sure that they posted on the post. Yeah, on your questionnaire, right? The previous yes. questionnaire. T. Fritzy. T. Fritzy. Okay. So listen, okay. YouTube, I want you to just DM me and then I'll make sure your information gets to them so we can get to your... Exactly. You give us to us, you guys, you'll get a parcel from Switzerland directly, <laughs> fresh, fresh from the oven, fresh from the oven. And by the way, you know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling that it's unfair as well not to make the same gesture to the Swiss line audience. So guys, check the recorded version. And Monica, I'm sure Monica is listening to us. Monica is our content manager. So she's the one managing Instagram. So Monica, that's a challenge for you. Figure out <laughs> so I'm offering also another set 
to the Swiss line audience. Monica, you figure out the best way to do it, okay? <laughs> so is, isn't this the best way to close a Friday yes. afternoon or break lunch uh, your time? Yes, this is. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. No, no, Chris. that's a pleasure, you know, to share Swiss line magic. So Dr. Lauren, how can Swiss line people find you? I know you have a beautiful website. Oh, yeah. You can find me everywhere at drlaurenpowell.com. So you can find me on my website. You can find me on Instagram, Dr. Lauren Powell. Um, I hope we get to do more talks and chats like this. I feel like we just kind of touched the surface. We um, will. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure we will. That's, that's a pleasure. So I think you should follow Dr. Powell because it's the one doctor I've seen that you really put your hands in the kitchen. So the content, <laughs> the content is not only like a teacher doctor sitting in the office with a white cloth. <laughs> <laughs> it's the buddy doctor, right? Which yes. Advice uh, from my side. So I think also some of you Swiss line, you know me from Dr. Powell. I'm sure you didn't know me. So there is the H Traveler. You'll also found it down. For the H Travel, which so far was only YouTube, I will begin this week as we speak to activate my Instagram account. So also to produce my little own content. So Wonderful. let's keep the conversation. I think we should not extend anymore <laughs> unless <laughs> anybody has. So just one question. One question. So first question we answer before we say goodbye. So who is the lucky one? Next question. I see thanks. So who is next? One more to ask a question. I hope it's a good question. Maybe I'm throwing both of us under the bus. No, thanks for a great talk. So nobody wants a question. It was interesting as always. Thank you for the conversation. So <laughs> they are good. You know, they are all dreaming to get three products from Swiss Life. <laughs> nice time. Dr. Lauren, such a pleasure. So talk soon, I hope. Talk soon. You have a great day. You too. Cheers. Thank you guys to everybody. See you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.